Hey Nick. <laughs> what do you think about spending five weeks of your summer editing a plant video? That sounds terrible. <sighs> okay, will you at least just look at it? Okay, fine. A few moments later. This is four and a half hours of raw. He left, didn't he? Okay, let's start out with a string of hearts someone accidentally sent me in a trade form. It is currently completely tangled and flowering. I should probably fix that. It's, there, there's no way I'm gonna fix that. So it's, it's, that's how it's going to be, unless I massacre it and propagate it, which I probably won't either. We have also got a Hoya Chelsea. Chelsea! That's doing really well for me. This didn't really grow for me throughout the winter. This was in my most overrated rare plants video and it was quite a bit smaller, but it didn't really send anything out for me until March, even though it was under grow lights. Also, it is no longer rare. You can get this for like $10 for a little pot, so. You're canceled. We've got some splash, if anyone cares. I don't care. Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. This was also in my overrated rare plants video. Costa Farms has since then come in and revoked its rare plant card, now that it is in Lowe's, Walmart, and many other big box stores. Some type of peperomia. I don't really care enough about it to try and figure out its name. It's kind of leaning but that's because I don't rotate it. It's my fault, but yeah. My Hoya Crimson Princess that I made a video on last year. Since then, it has sent out a lot of growth. I have removed a lot of the reverted foliage. There might be a little bit right here, but for the most part, it's all variegated. We also have a beautiful Boston fern in here. I don't really know what this says about my abilities to grow things but I wouldn't really recommend these as companion plants, but I guess it's happening. I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it. It's very whimsical. We have some kind of wilty streptocarpus because it is watering day. I love all the colors of these flowers. They're beautiful. This is a really pretty one if it wasn't wilted, but there's streaks, variegation, it's a variegated flower of pink throughout this nice lavender flower. Yellow and blue is one of my favorites. I love this combination. You can find Streptocarpus in almost any color, in any color combination. I would say except orange. There's not really any orange Streptocarpus, but any other colors, yes. So I have some more Streptocarpus that I have to destroy. We have an ignored Syndapsis Pictus that I have over here. It, it might be due for a repot, I don't know. Um, not sure. It looks, mm, it could go a few more months. My Hoya Shepardii decided that it wanted to rot on me. I'm not sure why. I've owned this probably like 10 years or more, but it did. I didn't really do anything different. This water is not gross. It's just the latex from the stems that's in the water. I have changed it several times. It is fully willing to flower for me though. So I don't know, whatever. We'll see if I can fix this. So I'm going to show you my Hoya Shepardii um, and I keep it outside in the summer. It does very well. This luscious green Hoya Breviolata, I have gotten one leaf out of it, this one, in the past 365 days, I have owned it. So pretty successful, yeah. If anyone has any tips on how to grow this, I will take them. Um, it's in miracle Grow. I might put it in peat moss and perlite like some of the other plants that responded well to that. Aspidistra elater Milky Way. Look at those constellationist leaves. I got this from California Tropicals and it was free shipping and $10 uh, after I applied the coupon code and everything. It's looking a little bit dehydrated. It's looking a little worse for the wear, but you get what you pay for. So I'm hoping this does something for me, but if not, I guess I can be mad. I cannot forget this Hoya Mathile. Thide? Mathilde. Mathilde? Mathilda. Mathilda, I think. It has done so well for me. It has grown throughout the winter. It has flowered. It has given me everything it could give. And I started it last year to leaves.
It is now 40, 50 leaves. This plant is so vigorous, which is why I think it's one of the more popular Hoya cultivars. Hoya carnosa compacta. This was sent to me last fall. Someone found a basket of this at Walmart and sent it to me for free. I actually got two, but they kind of ripped it right out of the pot and that damaged the roots and the root rot got one of the other ones. If they had just sent me cuttings, I'd probably have both right now, but beggars can't be choosers. Thank you if you're watching. The most retus Hoya. It's got a few yellow leaves, but I promise you it's perfectly healthy. It just drops the leaves every now and again. They look like pine needles almost. This is flowered for me as well. Uh, little white flowers, they don't come in bunches or penduncles like the other Hoyas, they just come one at a time, successively over many months, so I think that's really cool. It hasn't grown for me lengthwise, but it has put out a bunch of leaves, so it is much more full than when I got it. Hoya weyedii variegata. I had this under grow lights, it's lost a lot of its red color since I took it out from the grow lights. This has grown for me fairly slowly, I don't know, I think it's doubled in size since I got it last year, but as you know, with most Hoyas, I can get them to more than double in size, usually. We have this stunning Calathea mosaica right here. I never thought I would call a Calathea stunning in my environment, but it has defied all odds. It is called the network plant for this lovely venation that it has. I got this last year as a trending tropicals, while well, they were still relatively rare and people were selling them for like $40 on Mercari. You see those sheaths right there? That's new growth. It's just, it's sent out two flushes of growth so far. This doesn't really grow leaf by leaf, like a philodendron per se. It just gives you like 20 leaves all at once. And it has done so twice. And I am so happy with that. I've just recently taken out some of the leaves because they looked a little worse for the wear and they were blocking airflow within the plant. We have a string of turtles, which is actually a peperomia, you might notice, from these little appendages sticking out. Those are peperomia flowers. They're not your traditional roses per se, but they're a whole lot less basic. Got this last year and it was just a few tiny stems or two tiny stems, actually. We have this Hoya Carada Sumatra. I got it as a two-leaf cutting last year. It languished over the winter, besides sending me this leaf. By the spring, the roots were rotted, or early spring. Then I transitioned it to sphagnum moss. It was in miracle Grow, one of the few plants that do not thrive in miracle Grow for me, because a lot of them do. It's also finally giving me some of these kind of like rough edged leaves with this modeling on it. I don't really know if there's something wrong with these leaves or it's just how they develop. I haven't really looked at this very close, but I guess we'll find out and I, maybe it's spider mites or maybe the plant just hates me and wants to punish me after sending me out some growth. We've got Sansevieria Bentel's Sensation and let me tell you, it is sensational. I've been wanting this for a long time. I love how tall and skinny and architectural it is. It's very modern for that all white apartment rich people have because they can either replace their couch if they get something on it or just hire someone to clean it. Got this from California Tropicals for $17, free shipping, so what a steal. Deshita Rescafolia, I got this for $20, free shipping off of Etsy, and I got it a few weeks ago, so it was this size, so I can't really take credit for what it looks like. It has new growth on some of the tips, so I can only really account for the tips. Fun plant, very compact, and it produces tiny white flowers from what I hear, so I'm excited to see those. And also, apparently it produces seed pods readily if you put it outside, unlike Hoyas, which do it rarely. We have a fully white leaf right there to the right for you variegation freaks. Here is a full shot of this, excuse the decor. <laughs> This is my philodendron melanochrysum in all of its glory. It's got some yellowy leaves at the bottom. It recently got attacked by spider mites. I got this last year in July. July. It was one node. It is now 
many notes. Here it is. It's been about a month's growth. Okay, so time to repeat. Very excited about this spider mite damage because my plants just love to be attacked by spider mites. Like jerks. Happy fall, guys. That's natural, right? Right? Kind of. I mean, they're at the bottom. We have this beautiful syndapsis something. We have this beautiful syndapsis exotica. These leaves. Oh my god, look at these leaves. Only paid $4 for this, so I will take it. Look how splotchy this this one is. Do you think I could tell people this is a new cultivar and sell it on eBay for like $300? A variegated watermelon peperomia that was sent to me by an eBay seller in an envelope. People, do not send your plants in an envelope. I know, it saves you like three cents, but seriously. I also cut off part of one of the leaves. I don't think it's there anymore because I was trying to open the envelope. And like, how do you open it? You have to cut part of it. Here is an Anthurium crystallinum. I got this as a node, kind of. It was just roots and a growth point. I have another one I can show you. Mmm, more spinach. It has since dissolved. Here's the top where velvet liciousness was supposed to come out. It's not ideal. Maybe I'll put some cinnamon on top of it. It's not necessarily what I expected. I'm gonna bake it into an apple pie, but it happens. Here is a Philodendron Splendid, and I have to tell you, so far, it has gone splendidly. My Hoya Rebecca that got root rot this winter. I think it was just over potted, but I have chopped it up because I feel like that's the only way it was going to survive. And it has since given me some new growth. So I'm pretty happy about that. I never got to see it flower, but it did send out many penduncles trying to save itself by reproducing before its inevitable death. And we've got a reverted pink princess or mostly reverted pink princess. There's some type of pink coloration on the leaf on the top. I had to kind of like pry it out of the sheath because it was growing so fast because I had it in direct sun. And a Hoya Megalaster. Um, I don't know what it's doing. It's just sending out the stem. My other one, the parent plant is dead. And the only reason why I have a cutting of it since the parent plant is only like two or three nodes is because it broke in shipping, but I guess it saved it somehow. Here are some pink lady peperomias, probably one of the most fickle plants that I've ever had. I would not recommend growing it. It like wanes between no variegation and all variegation, and when it's all variegation it just dies. Another fickle pink lady peperomia, which was formerly all green, and now it's all <laughs> and dying. I, I don't, come on, we have to find balance within our life. So that ends this room. And that is like a, a step situation over there. It works really well as a plant stand. Uh, not very sturdy. Uh, if you walk into it, that might be a problem. He needs some milk. We are now in another room and this is my Anthurium crystallianum crossed with Forgettii. It has gotten so large since the last time I've had it. Like the video if you like the before and afters because I have to scroll past my regrettable choices to find the before pictures. There's some spider mite damage at the bottom because they decided to ruin my life when this gave me the largest leaf so far. How could you not love this? Hoya Macrophylla Variegata. I got this for $10 at a local nursery. Uh, not the size, it was much smaller. It was last year, but it has grown tremendously since then. I had this in a warmer area, but when the sun struck it, it tended to burn the plant. So I decided to put it in an area where it had more air movement and problem solved. Don't mind this watermelon peperomia. I can't walk by it without stopping to look at it. 
because it's just too beautiful and too lush for me not to. It has even got its first flower. So I'm so excited about that. Sorry about the truck traffic. Um, it's way too hot for me to close the window without melting. Here is a dendrobium and the flowers are near black. It's called Dendrobium Negro NN. We've got Hoya Lacunosa, Hoya Croniana's less exciting sister. I know I bashed it in one of my videos, Hoya Croniana. But they almost look the same. I prefer the thicker, rounder leaves of Croniana, but this is nice. In Gracum Dideri. Uh, I love this plant. It's a great orchid, great space saver. If you're going to get an orchid, this is one of my top recommendations in my years of growing orchids. The flowers are gigantic. They're almost the size of the plant. They're white and they smell of Easter lilies. I recently just had to repot it and we actually have a bud developing right there. I featured this Hoya in my video. I have not gotten rid of it yet. It is supposed to be a Hoya Pupigalyx Royal Hawaiian. As you see, this is new growth. It is not royal or Hawaiian, so I'm not, I'm not doing it we have a novelty Phalaenopsis hybrid. And the flowers tend to be very colorful and waxy. They have very thick petals and they last a long time, even more so than regular Phalaenopsis flowers. I would say like I've gotten them to last like four months, which is crazy for a flower. Some orchids, their flowers last nine months. And if you're wondering what these are, they're called pot latches. They only work with this type of clay pot that have the lip. If you're interested, they screw into your wall, they will damage it. You cannot use command hooks or anything like that because plants are generally too heavy. Here is my philodendron micans basket. It is quite large. I struggle to get it in the frame. It has done very well for me. I give it direct sunlight. It's in a southern window right now and it's in the summer, so it can tolerate that direct sunlight. It cannot tolerate high heat. I put it in my porch, which gets really hot, and it burned a lot of the leaves off. Lesson learned, I will not do that again. I got this July of last year in a four inch pot. It has grown tremendously. The pot that it's in is not the hanging basket, but it's in a smaller pot because these have small root systems. Here is my Hoya Linearis, and if you watch my videos, it's not been too long since you've last seen it, but it has grown a lot. This has grown so much. I bought this as a stem that was about a foot long. Here is the full plant because I could not get it in the frame because it is like five feet long. How could we forget this Hoya Serpens? I got this last year. It was relatively small. It was only about three notes. This grew for me right through the winter, no problem. I've gotten penduncles, but I have not gotten fully formed, developed flowers. We have some sad looking streptocarpus. I don't know what it is. I think this window is just doomed. Now that I took the other streptocarpus out of it, they seem to be thriving. And now that I've put these in it, they seem to be dying. I don't really know what it is. We've got two Costa Farms hanging baskets, one of lemon lime philodendron and the other of syndapsis pictus. I am so proud of these. These have grown so much. The syndapsis is hitting the floor. It's beyond hitting the floor. It's hitting the depths of hell. I just have a mixed pothos basket right here, even though there's syndapsis. You know, people call them pothos, so I figured I'd include them. I think there's some philodendron Brazil in here as well. If I was a fairy person, I most definitely would want to walk through this. We also have an Oncidium Sherry Baby. The flowers smell amazing. Some people say they smell like chocolate. I don't really think they smell like chocolate, but they smell like something really delicious. Another random Phalaenopsis and a Phalaenopsis that I'm rehabbing because most of the roots rotted off. I'm trying water culture. There we go. There you go. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine. We have some variegated string of hearts that have grown for me profusely. It is now flowering more than it is growing. Maybe it needs to be in less sunlight 
but it's doing well nonetheless. I got this at Succulent Depot probably like six months ago. It was only a couple nodes, but the cost of it was only like eight or ten dollars, so I'd go for it if you want one of these. A Silver Glory String of Hearts. This has also grown for me quite well. I also got this as a couple nodes. We have some Phalaenopsis. This is one of my favorites. I don't know what it's called. I got it at a grocery store, but nonetheless, it's beautiful. Here are some Majesty Palms. Not looking so majestic. I just, I can't deal with these. Oh my god! I can't! I would never have bought them if not to serve as a background in my videos because I'm a plant channel, so I need some plants in my background. Time for the porch, and we will start with the beautiful, incomparable Syngonium Podophyllum Albo. We're getting a lot of albo at the top. I just recently cut it off because it was going full albo and I didn't really want it to drain nutrients from my plant. I have had this for about a year. I got it as a long, pretty much leafless stem. This is not the whole stem. This is actually just the end of the stem. So I had a bunch of other parts of the stem that I sold or traded or did something else with. I don't know what else you would do with a Syngonium Podophyllum Albo, but yeah, I, I did that. We have a Monstera Peru. It's looking a little bit chlorotic. It always has looked chlorotic for me. I've just accepted it because it seems to be doing well despite that. Here is my lovely global green pothos. It's just, it's so special. I, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, because it's not, it's just overpriced. How much does this go for in today's current market? Well, the answer is $15 a node. We have got another overrated rare plant, Philodendron Rio. I would say that I regret purchasing this, but I did not purchase it. I traded it for a few leaves of equally hideous Paparomia Pink Lady. Okay, it's not that hideous. The price is kind of hideous. $60 a leaf. I've seen this go for it. It's kind of nonsense. We've got another one over here because I could not just stop at one. I was given two pieces. We have a very fickle Philodendron Pink Princess. I've had this for about a year. It decided it wanted to revert on me at some point last year. So I cut the top off and I restarted the plant. It was actually at the base down here. You can see it right there. It has grown a lot for me though. I give it lots of sun. It is potted in peat moss and perlite as by recommendation from Gabriella plants. That's what they plant their pink princesses in. So it's a pretty good mix. It's very simple, very cheap. It doesn't resemble fruit salad, but um, it'll work. Most of the variegation on this plant, ironically enough, is on the back of the leaves, so I can't really see it too well, unfortunately. Here is my irreplaceable Hoya croniana. I got this last year as a few pieces of stem and leaves, a few nodes floating in a pot. It grew for me over the winter under lights, and since spring came around, it has just taken off. I could have never imagined I thought this would be really slow growing. This proved me extremely wrong and it's growing about as fast as I think a Hoya can grow. The splash to this is quite inconsistent. We have a stem with no splash. The one I just showed you has quite a bit of splash. Here is where it flowered. There's a penduncle on there. I'm sure it'll flower again. I am excited to own, as with all my velvet leaf philodendrons, a philodendron gloriosum. Not wanting to fork out three figures, I decided to go on Mercari, as I usually do, and buy a node. It only cost me $28, and it is the best $28 I have ever spent. This also came down with my spider mites. They, they really know how to hit me hard. Just go after all of my velvet leaf philodendrons. I have decided that I will be a lacewing in my next life. No, this is not philodendron bilite. I will not purchase one of those. This is philodendron abata fuens. What is special about this is that the leaf backings are a beautiful Bordeaux or burgundy or whatever type of red wine you'd like to call it. 
port. I got this, I think about a month ago. The person on eBay who sold it to me decided to ship it in soaking wet bark soil. Even though it has damage, apparently the roots still rotted. Syngonium Batik. I got this as a node. I think it was in March. It was not in good condition, but it was $12 free shipping off of Mercari. So if it died, it, it died. Also a Mercari acquisition, Philodendron Squamiferum. Here is one of the leaves that it arrived with. And the stems aren't really looking Squamiferiferous yet, but I'm hoping they'll get there. And the leaves are still entire, but I hope that will change soon. Hoya Numularoides also did not do anything during the winter. It would not. It refused. I was going to get rid of it if it didn't do anything over the summer, but it did. So I'm happy about it. Cute plant. I guess the flowers are very fragrant, but I would not know yet because the plant is so small. My Hoya Fitchii that is growing into the siding. Let me remove that if I can delicately. So let's go down the vine. There it is. In all of its venacious glory. My Silver Sword, and not those things that grow on top of the volcanoes in Hawaii that are endangered because tourists keep taking them. We got this last year, it was about, I would say this tall, whatever is in the frame right here. It got spider mites, of course, because everything I own gets spider mites, story of my life. I'm sure I'll find them in my cereal one day. I'm looking forward to see it develop those little lobes at the top. They do that when they are mature. This is not mature yet. Hoya sigillatus, Hoya sigillatus. Hoya Sagittarius. I got this to grow for me through the winter under lights, but it gave me really weird shaped leaves, as you can see right here. They should be kind of a very long oval tapered at the base. I don't know what this is. It's not, it's not that. Another Syngonium pedophilum. My raven. We have a new growth on here that I just discovered. I got this December of 2019. It does not have any of the original foliage on it. The last leaf just passed away, unfortunately. But in its legacy, it left these ones. And this one right here is the most recent leaf. These do not grow in the winter, in my experience. This large frond leaf, whatever, was sent out in spring. I don't think I've ever gotten any winter growth on this. Carluma buchardii and Kalinkoe something something ensis, I think. This is about six years old from seed. Hasn't flowered for me yet. I don't know if it ever will. It's from the Canary Islands. Moo, look at the camera. No, that's not the camera. That's okay. Miss Australia 2021. No, Hoya Strauss Lisa. If you watch the channel, I bring her up often, so I'm going to spare you the details of the story I got her last year. She's grown like 15 feet for me. No wonder why these are no longer considered rare. It got a little toasted at the bottom right here. I gave it a little bit too much sun. Since then, I have put a screen down so it filters out some of the light, but not all of it. Hey, it's better than my plant dying in the darkness. Like, would you rather have a heart attack while you're running a marathon or would you rather like eat yourself to death on a couch? Like, I would rather go out in a marathon and then people would have a more positive outlook on me. Okay, I took it outside. We needed better light. This is one of the most perplexing plants I've ever owned Philodendron Brantaneatum. This was given to me last year as a small plant. I did not purchase this. It did terrible throughout the winter. I think it got, you guessed it, spider mites. Once spring came, it sent out this nice, beautiful leaf. And then it subsequently sent out this leaf. And then the one behind it looks kind of normal, but it looks spider mighty. But there are no spider mites on it. No spider mites. 
Hoya, Alagiorum, Alagalorum, Elilacorum. I got her from Logies last year in a 2.5 inch pot. It was in the fall. It grew for me, I would say, solidly throughout the winter. Some burn. We got some nice burn. I'm running a marathon. Don't come for me. There is the flower bud and there's an old one hanging on that never left. Just let go. Come on. It's not happening. Flowers have a spicy scent, but not a sweet spicy scent. It reminds me of Thieves essential oil. One thing I can say that's negative about this plant is that the leaves are very brittle and they get damaged very easily. Here you can see a cut in that. That never happens with any of my other Hoyas. I've never injured my other Hoyas unless they like fell out of the Freedom Tower. But <laughs> otherwise, no, they're all intact except this one. We have a Hoya Pubicolix Pink Silver. And I say Pubicolix because someone told me that no one will say Pubicalix. And it looks beautiful, although it does not have the price tag of Hoya Wilbur Graves and other Hoyas that look pretty much just like it, but are more expensive. Here is a philodendron Florida ghost looking much less like what the plant community wants it to, but much more healthy. We have two leaves at the bottom, no leaves on the stem, and then one leaf, and we have a growth point up here. If you are wondering what happened, the amount of irrigation on this plant changes when the amount of light changes. So the more light it has, the more irrigation it has and vice versa. However, that resulted in this plant putting out all white leaves and all white leaves cannot photosynthesize whatsoever. So at some point, the plant's energy got so diminished, it just dropped all of them. I have another Hoya croniana because why not? It's putting some new growth out for me. Here we have Hoya corticii, or corticii, if you don't want to be fancy. I think that this is an underrated Hoya. It's got splash on it, and I think it's much more interesting than Hoya serpens, to be completely honest. I mean, just look at those leaves. They're even shaped uniquely. We have a Hoya Megillivrei I got last year. This is an Australian native. It arrived to me fried. Looked like someone left it on the Barbie a little bit too long. There is not much to say about it. It's grown pretty well for me. I think there is a penduncle. It's just tiny and I have no idea if it's going to do anything. It did not. Hoyas like to give you that false hope. And it has some love juices on it from my Hoya Carii. Hoya Calistophila. This is the Hoya equivalent of Go Girl. Give me nothing. Okay, it's given me two leaves right here. Entirely underwhelming and it does not look as if I'm going to get any embryonic photosynthetic panels anytime soon. This is in miracle Grow. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to repot it in peat and perlite. We don't have an obligatory burn on it, but we do have an obligatory Hoya Carii stain on it. Look, another Podophyllum elbow. Go girl, give us nothing. I am usually the one to buy tiny plants or rehab plants as you would know if you've been watching the channel. I've probably already included a few examples in this video. Unfortunately, this was still 69 whole dollars, ironically. When I got the plant, it was actually much smaller. One of the reasons that I bought this is because I have the regular croniana, and I know that one grows like a weed for me, so I figured I'd be pretty safe with this one. I just love how silvery the leaves are and how compact the plant is. We have an Anthurium crystallinum. Don't worry, I do not keep it in direct sun. This is just for showing purposes. If you know me, I like my Anthuriums dissolved and not stirred. Mmm, more spinach. I can put it right next to my Shangri-La photos. Let's do some investigation. Here's the top where Velvet Liciousness was supposed to come out. The roots are fine. They actually look 
totally okay. There are some side shoots right here, so maybe I can salvage it. Maybe I'll put some cinnamon on top of this. No amount of cinnamon in the Dutch East Indies could have saved that note. And we'll bake it into an apple pie. Another failure on my part, Hoya Rotundiflora. I got this last year. It had a few nodes. I did a wretched unboxing. Oop. And I, oh. I repotted it in spring because it looked like it needed repotting. The plant was fairly large and the pot was like maybe three inches. So I repotted it into a four inch pot and promptly it developed root rot and died. It even flowered for me. I think the buds on it, on the tip of it, are actually kind of developing. Look, it has a new fuzzy little leaf. The reason I'm going to show you the Hoyas out here is because they demanded better lighting. Oh, hello, Lisa. Aren't you just in a provocative stance? If you watched the last video, here's the one I'm getting rid of, I think. We've got some obligatory scorch, whether you can see it that well or not. The rest of the plant, however, looks totally fine. So I'm just convinced that Hoyas like it a little bit rough. You may also have seen this one on the list of plants I'm getting rid of, Hoya affinis. I decided I'd keep this a little bit longer, see what it does. It's summer, after all, but definitely if I don't want to keep it, it's going before winter. No flowers yet though, just vine. It is quite small though. Right next to it is a really weird Areostema Hoya Lauderbacki Y. If you saw this plant on the monotonously long plants that did well this winter and did I object. not do well for me this winter video, it was not doing well. It was not the winter. I cannot blame the ice queen from Narnia. It was the potting soil. The soil was miracle Grow, but it was also amended with garden lime because people told me it needed alkaline soil because naturally it grows on limestone outcrops. Alkaline soil usually isn't good for plants, but some plants are adapted to it. However, this does not mean that they want it. Just because a plant grows in generally in ideal conditions, it does not mean they want those in ideal conditions. It just means they found an ecological niche and filled it. And that's why they are there. See, look at these terribly chlorotic, beetle looking, fuzzy, shiny leaves. This is Hoya Parasitica Splash. I've had this for about one year. I started it as a single leaf Burn. See, this is how I figure out the amount of light and heat I can give a plant for optimal growth. Welcome to the family. I've actually had this plant for over a year. I'm just trying to dodge accountability. We have Hoya Imperialis. I got this last year as a small plant with a few sets of leaves. I also know it's Imperialis. I just like pronouncing things wrong for the fun of it. Look at all this new growth. This is one of the fastest growing Hoyas in terms of vine length, I would say. And it's given me all of these penduncles. Penduncle, 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 penduncle. This is a baby one, but it started giving me penduncles late winter to my surprise. They all produced buds. They got up to about this size and then they promptly fell off slowly. One by one, not all at once. Just wanted to draw it out, torture me a little bit. Maybe these ones will stick now that it's getting more sun, but maybe not. Here's a regular ZZ plant that was supposed to be variegated. They lied. They said that the mother plant had variegation and that this one would as well. Hoya Archbold Iana. I got this last year as a small plant. It had a couple leaves. I think those four leaves at the bottom that are kind of crushed by shipping. Thank you, USPS. This did not grow for me all winter, unfortunately. It was rather sad. I didn't know if it was going to do much for me. It just decided to give me two feet of growth in like a week. To my knowledge, they really like warm weather. So if you live somewhere warm, this is a Hoya I would recommend. This is one of my favorites. I got this last year in February. It survived in the mail fine in the winter. And we've got this obligatory burn. I think this needed to be repotted in the winter time. 
However, this gave me problems in late fall. The leaves started spotting from overwatering. I therefore waited until the leaves were soft near the base, because those usually get soft first, to water. I was, however, not going to repot it until I could put it in an environment above 80 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. I love to burn things. This has just been flowering like crazy and dropping nectar literally all over everything and it's like sticky and brown. Whenever I go near it, I get either this on my arm or on my shirt. Also, the penduncles have been replacing the flowers non-stop. So there's a new set of flowers right under here. So no, it hasn't been a situation of the penduncle just flowering and then not flowering. They just, they keep going. The flowers themselves, the scent is interesting. I would say maple syrup mixed with how do I say? Hoya Kamingiana. This has been a really fast grower for me. I got this in the mail last year during summer. It had root rot. So I had to cut the top of it off and it rooted. We have our first peduncle. Peduncle. I'm so excited because I've heard they smell really good. They do not. Um, hopefully not in the way my carry eye smells. I'll spare you the details. Let's move on further up the stem. This was like six inches last year and it had to be re-rooted. So it was already behind. Look at this leaf. That's where the stem was blocking the light from the grow light. This is Hoya vitilinoides. I got this as one leaf last summer. It's done pretty well for me, not as well as I'd like it to. Now the top one is pretty good size, but these ones got stunted and there were a bunch, as you can see, because the stem is bare, that fell off. Since the spring, I got these two new leaves. They look like they're going to be full-sized, robust, healthy leaves. I think this is a really cool Hoya nonetheless. And if you're willing to keep your house above, I would say like 68, and into the 70s during the winter, it will grow for you. Here is my Hoya hanging basket, and here we have a Hoya obscura. We also have a Hoya sunrise, and we have a very special appendage on here. It is a seed pod. I'm not sure if this is going to do anything, if it is going to ripen and give me fertile seeds. I'm not holding my breath. This did not cross with anything. It crossed with itself. And I know some Hoyas are self infertile. We may not get anything. I will keep you updated. Would anyone like some impotent, apocinaceous embryo receptacles? We've got some sun stress. This gets sun pretty much all day from the morning all the way until the late afternoon. So the strongest sun of the day hits this. We also have another small Hoya sunrise. We have my Gardenia Fortuniana. If you've purchased a grocery store Gardenia and it's promptly died on you, same. If you want a Gardenia that's actually going to do well for you and flower, Gardenia Fortuniana. We have a whole palm tree right here. This is a Trachycarpus Fortunii. It is a cold hardy palm tree. Not cold hardy enough to here, but it does tolerate temperatures down to 10 degrees without burning the leaves off and zero degrees if you want to burn the leaves off. You've seen this in one of my videos as a background plant, but it is now too big to fit in that area, so I have retired it. We have not one, but two white bird of paradise. These are going to be my background plants in my future videos. They're not tall enough right now, so I think I'll put them on some type of platform, but I'm hoping I can get them a couple feet taller by the end of the summer, and they'll be all set for me to use them all winter. Here is my Ficus triangularis variegata. It's starting to leaf out after it decided to just drop all of its leaves this winter and a bunch of annoying tiny figs as well to complement that. I got this at Lowe's last year for $9. It was featured in one of my videos, one of my hauls. Here we have Ficus benjamina marguerite. 
there we have some variegation. The new leaves are lighter and then they fade pretty much completely to green so you can't really see it. So you have to have new growth on this all the time for it to actually look different from the unvariegated form. We mustn't forget about my camellia debutante. This was also in the same video as this in the background. It is giving me a lot of growth. This may look different. I pruned it down to one stem. I want it to be more conical, use up more vertical space than horizontal space, and a decent house plant. It weathers the winter quite well, and it doesn't drop a lot of leaves. Looking at you, we have a Satellaria chiathioides. This is a Hawaiian tree fern. It doesn't get very tall in nature. It usually kind of creeps along lava rocks. It usually grows straight out of lava rocks. And when it sends out these fronds in Hawaii, not here, I guess the sun is not strong enough, they turn bright red, which would be really pretty, but the plant itself is nice enough. Love a Hawaiian tree fern. We have another Hawaiian tree fern that I have to back up to show you the entirety of. This is Sibotium glaucum. There are cars going by. This has just gotten massive. It's taken a few years to establish, but now that it has, it's growing massive three foot leaves. I would recommend this endlessly. Tree ferns are great because they're not as delicate as the ones that grow on trees because they are exposed to the sun and the elements, which makes them quite a bit hardier in my opinion. We have a fiddlehead right here. This really needs to be repotted but I will get to that. It's giving me a trunk, finally. There it is, it's kind of a trunk. It's about six inches, if you include the crown where the leaves are coming out. And we have a Nicotania growing out there, or flowering tobacco, if you don't know what that is. We have a Philodendron bilitae. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't get excited, rare plant peoples. This is just a Philodendron burl marks. I got this last year in a trade. It kind of stagnated over the winter. I mean, I rooted it last year, but it stagnated. It didn't grow much. And then it sent out a ton of growth this year. So I'm pleased. I was going to get rid of it, but then it just gave me all this new growth. So I couldn't. I'd like to put this on a pole someday. Right here, we have a caladium. I forget what cultivar they are, so I'll just insert the pictures because you can't see them right now because they have not leafed out. We've got some shoots. Tratus contia nanook. I know people were crazy about this last year and now Costa Farms released it a bunch and people are like, trash. But I think it's pretty. Lavender is one of my favorite colors. It's even got these cute flowers. They're kind of underwhelming compared to the plant, but I appreciate them. I appreciate the sexual organs of this plant. This has grown a lot for me. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like when I got it, but it was definitely not this big. Some neon pothos. Who doesn't love some electric green pothos? Some people don't talk to those people. I know I've made some derogatory comments about pothos, but they're very reliable and hardy and they grow well, so I'll tolerate them. Otherwise, I wouldn't. And an amaryllis. Nothing too exciting. First things first, I'm the realist. I must show you my Peperomia macrostatia. It's like six feet tall. Last year, this was a wee sprout, and now it is a towering specimen. It's this large. Do you mind? I just crunched something. We have my fried Hoya skinneriana. I had it on my porch, my hot porch. It gets like 90 degrees on there. This did not like it and I've burned it about three times, wanting to keep it on that porch because it looked aesthetic. I was like, if I move it like three inches away from the sun, it'll solve it, right? No. On the bright side, this is honestly much better than some of the variegation I've seen. Pearls and Jade's Pothos is the name. Variegation is the game. And now you hate me. I think this might be getting too much sun. I started this from three four inch pots last year. I haven't really cared enough to move this into any sort of shade. I'll move it back a little bit. Behind here, we have an Aglaonema firecracker. Saw it at Walmart, thought it was cute, picked it up. Ever since then, it's been growing great. I would say for this plant, don't put it in direct sun. It did not burn, but it just stalled the growth. This is my second Pride and Joy and one plant 
out of this tour I would recommend that you get and I'm pretty sure you can get it because people on Etsy sell it for like seven dollars and eBay like you can find this under ten dollars I started this from a small pot last year and it grew through the winter like a champ and now it's growing even more and it has achieved its final form because I cannot see the hanging basket achievement unlocked. that was the goal we have a marble slash snow queen pothos they are the same thing if you didn't know i guess it just depends on how much variegation you keep on it meaning how much you prune off the green chlorophyllous form and make it weak which is what i did with this one but yeah we've got some there's a fly hi fly wide form of monstera adansonii which i think looks better than the narrow form that's right here. I don't know. The leaves just have more character. Philodendron Brazil that must be repotted or else it is going to strangle me. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, and more Monstera Adansonii that I made in my hanging basket video. It's probably going to take about a year for this to fully fill out. There's the Monstera Adansonii. If you're looking for the update for that, I'll take it out for you. I'll show you if I can. Not with one hand. I was correct, not with one hand. We'll just drag it. It'll come loose. Look, it's fine. And here is the Adansonii with the Philodendron Brazil. Star-crossed lovers they are. Can we play the Titanic music? Okay, one, two, three. I love you ceiling Dion. My hibiscus that I need to get rid of because it needs to be repotted and I'm not repotting it. A Hoya Crimson Princess, not looking very crimson-y. I don't know why it's got new growth. There's a little bit of crimson. It's just, it's giving us a taste of crimson, but not much. I got this last year from Walmart, Costa Farms, and a Manhula Pothos. And I will take this down for you because I love you and you can't see the rest of it. I mean, no one can really see it up in the tree except that, you know, nest of vampire bats. Oh, Here we are. This looks nice. I didn't know how nice this looked because it's been dangling from a tree for a month and I haven't been able to see it. I think this might be my favorite pothos. It is also shaped like Easter Island. So that's fun. We got a Sansevieria Danish crown. Someone gave this to me. They're like, hey, I've got a plant. I don't want it. It was on Reddit. And I was like, I'll take it. I burned it a little bit. <laughs> I burned so many plants. This is not a house plant, so don't cancel me. But I had to show you because my spirit of freedom rose is just giving me this wonderful performance. The flowers are fragrant and delicious, and I love it. And it gives me lots and lots of petals her flower. It has a high petal count. That is important um, if you're a flower girl because it gives you a lot of petals to throw. It's like when you're at the strip club and you have ones. Um, obviously you're not going to throw 50s. I also just like to grab handfuls of like the dying ones and pretend. Yep. Okay, ready? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I would be a terrible flower girl, but that's like one of my bucket lists. So if you need a flower girl. Okay, one more non houseplant plant. This is Phyllostatus besetii. It is a type of bamboo. And before you come after me, we are surrounded by parking lots. There is nowhere for this to go. And now I can fill my lifelong dream of owning a penguin. That wasn't right, was it? And now I can fulfill my lifelong dream of owning a panda. Cause that's legal, right? Right? I mean, I have the bamboo. This would probably be like enough bamboo for like a midday snack. And my, ping <laughs> my, my penguin, my panda would be dead. That would be, can you imagine? Can you imagine? People love pandas. You would, you would like have a target on your back. I'm gonna go to Walmart and throw petals at people. It's going to be a social experiment.
Only the best for you, my queen. Oh my god, I gotta do that thing for- Plan to reenact. Oh my god.